Good morning. We want to begin this morning with some breaking news. The Vatican announcing former Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI has passed away at the age of 95. He led the Catholic Church for less than eight years until 2013 when he became the first pope to resign since Gregory XII back in 1415. Benedict spent his final years within the walls of the Vatican. ABC's Inez de la Catera has more for us this morning. It's not just his papacy, but the way it ended, defining Pope Benedict XVI's legacy. In February 2013, Benedict became the first pope in 600 years to resign. He cited his advanced age and failing health, stepping aside as Pope Francis was elected, and Benedict became the first Pope Emeritus in modern history, living out his final years in a former monastery on the Vatican grounds, at times joining Pope Francis at major church events. He was born in Germany in 1927 as Joseph Ratzinger. Shortly after he turned 14, he, like most young Germans at the time, was forced to join the Hitler Youth, but he was not a willing participant. When he returned to Germany as pontiff, he became only the second pope in history to visit a synagogue. He was elected pontiff on April 19, 2005 to fill the vacancy left by Pope John Paul II. He chose the name Benedict XVI. He had been known as God's Rottweiler, an unyielding conservative and guardian of traditional Catholic values, but he soon surprised his skeptics, showing his gentler side. Benedict never veered far from his conservative beliefs. He condemned gay marriage, the ordination of women, and allowing priests to marry. He also addressed the sex abuse crisis within the Catholic Church, meeting privately with victims of pedophile priests during his trip to the U.S. in 2008. No words of man could describe the pain and harm inflicted by such abuse. But some say that scandal, the Pope seemed unable to put to rest, eventually played a role in his resignation, his retirement shaking up the Vatican, securing his place in history. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Paris. We will have more later on this hour of Pope Benedict's passing. Plus, we've got some more sad news to report. The passing of broadcasting icon Barbara Walters. She died yesterday at the age of 93. We'll also have more on her passing and her life coming up in just a few minutes. But for now, good morning. It is Saturday. It is New Year's Eve. How it long is. have we been waiting for this day to get here, huh? <sighs> I don't know, because the last few years seem like one long year, yeah. you know? Really, I wonder what 2023 has in store for us. Rain, maybe? Hopefully. Hopefully. Yes. You know, I got drizzled on all the way home yesterday. You did? Yeah. All up right. There towards like 1604 and past 1604, Bits and drizzles. That's Spits about all we've gotten this year. In fact, it's the second driest year on record for San Antonio, and that record will hold today. As we take a look at visibility, we have been seeing some fog develop across parts of the hill country early this morning. Now, the good news is visibility has recovered even in Kerrville, where just a short while ago we were looking at visibility less than half a mile. It's chilly this morning. You're going to want a jacket if you have an early uh, morning here. It's 44 in San Antonio, 44 in Skeen, 45 in New Braunfels, in the upper 30s in Bandera. It's 34 in Kerrville and 48 at Bernie Stage Road there uh, right on the Bear and uh, Kendall County line. So here's what's in store this weekend for you. New Year's weekend. Today, sunny with low humidity. It's it's going to be a perfect way to end 2022. Really hard to complain. 77 degrees. Now tonight with the fireworks going on, I think some haze could actually develop. I'll talk a little bit more about that coming up in just a bit. And tomorrow, Sunday, still a nice day. We're going to have some morning fog, patchy morning fog early tomorrow morning. We'll wake up at 50 and then 75 for the high. You'll notice a little bit more mugginess in the evening and afternoon tomorrow, but really feeling the mugginess, especially on Monday. More on that and of course your New Year's Eve fireworks forecast coming up in a bit. David. Right, thank you. As we mentioned, topping your morning headlines, legendary TV news anchor Barbara Walters has died at the age of 93. She joined ABC back in 1976. She was the first female anchor ever on an evening news program. Three years later, she became the co-host of 2020, went on to launch The View in 1997. It continues to air 25 years later. She was known for her legendary interviews of world leaders and celebrities, which won her 12 Emmy Awards over her career. We'll have more on her life coming up 
in the next half hour. Meanwhile, back here at home, police have arrested a suspect in the killings of four University of Idaho students. 28 year old graduate student Brian Kohlberger was arrested yesterday in Pennsylvania. Sources briefed on the investigation say authorities narrowed their focus to Kohlberger after tracing his ownership of a white Hyundai Elantra seen in the area of the killings around the time of the death. Right now, it's still unclear what relationship was he had with the four students. He's accused of murdering. Police say more evidence is needed for a successful prosecution. We are still looking for more information. We're still trying to build that picture, just like we have stated all along. Um, we're putting all the pieces together, and that will help. Koberger is being held without bond in Pennsylvania and is expected back in court next week. Noon this morning, we're gathering more details on an overnight shooting on the city's west side. San Antonio police say a fight broke out inside the El Bucan Bucanero Mexican restaurant on Marbach Road near 410. It eventually escalated outside into the parking lot a few minutes after 2 a.m. SAPD says one of the suspects pulled out a gun, fired several shots, striking a 36-year-old man several times. The victim was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. The suspect still on the run. And also new this morning, one man shot in the head while driving after an argument at a club on the city's northwest side. According to San Antonio police, two men got into an argument in a club near Vance Jackson. The argument then escalated. Police say one man followed the other in a vehicle and started firing several shots, striking the driver in the head. The suspect drove off. The victim taken to the University Hospital, where he's expected to be okay. It is now 6.06 and 47 degrees still to come. 2023, just a few hours away. So we want to remember some of the best moments of 2022, specifically in the entertainment industry. That's including the slap heard round the world. Coming up. And a live look outside with live cam. Some fog out there this morning on the drive-in. So if you're up getting ready to hit the road for whatever reason, be careful on that. Sarah Spivey is here. She's got your complete New Year's Eve and the way we're going to start New Year's tomorrow. For well, welcome back. It is 610 and happy New Year's Eve. Before 2023 begins, we want to take a look back at 2022. The entertainment headlines this year, certainly unpredictable. ABC's Jason Nathanson recaps the top stories coming out of Hollywood this year, including the one that shocked a lot of comedians and went viral on social media. A couple of things nobody had on their 2022 bingo card at the beginning of the year that Will Smith would slap Chris Rock on stage at the Oscars and Kanye West would declare his love for Hitler. But both happened during this crazy year. Smith slapped Rock after Rock made a joke about Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, and her close cropped hair, the result of a disease called alopecia. Rock apparently didn't know about the condition. An enraged Smith marched on stage and smacked Rock in the face, earning him a 10-year ban from the award show. He also resigned as a member of the Academy. Kanye West is the celebrity who possibly most went off the rails in 2022. Ye, who has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, frequently spewed conspiracy theories and anti-Semitic beliefs, which led Adidas and The Gap to cut ties with the rapper. And the allegations were... Johnny Depp and ex-wife Amber Heard's libel trials were must-see TV, bringing out outrageous revelations of messy sheets and domestic Should abuse, the jury ball. awarding Depp more than $10 million in damages, but also giving Heard $2 million. After threats of appeals, they've since settled. Harvey Weinstein, also back on trial in 2022, convicted once again of rape and other sexual assault counts in Los Angeles. The former movie mogul facing more decades in prison on top of the 23-year sentence he's currently serving in New York. It's one of life's mysteries, sir. The box office tried to rebound from the pandemic in 2022, but it couldn't fully recover. Top Gun Maverick, one of a few movies to take off. To date, only It, Jurassic World Dominion, and Avatar The Way of Water have earned a billion dollars worldwide, compared to nine films that earned a billion in 2019. Coda. <laughs> At the Oscars, Coda made history, the first film featuring a mostly deaf cast to win Best Picture, and the first film from a streaming service, Apple, to win Best Picture. Apple TV Plus also winning Best Comedy at the Emmys again for Ted Lasso, HBO scoring a bunch of Emmys for The White Lotus, and Best Drama winner, Succession. Taylor Swift once again dominated the music world, dropping her 10th studio album, Midnight's, which became the biggest selling album in years. Swift also made history with the songs from Midnight's occupying spots 1 through 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. First time that's ever happened. Nice. 
Bad Bunny also had a huge year. His album Un Verano Sin Ti was Apple Music and Spotify's most streamed of the year globally, and the first Spanish language album nominated for Album of the Year at the Grammys. You know, it's always at the end of the year, you want to look back and then you forget about half the stuff that they show you and go, oh, yeah, oh, that yeah. did happen this year, didn't it? Absolutely. I forgot, I forgot all about that. So a lot happening in the entertainment industry over the last year. And that slap was like, what, it's February? It was February. It was like a long time ago. I know. And not much happening. Well, I don't know. Not much happening in weather because it was like we had the boring. It was a pretty 90 plus quiet days. year. Yeah, yeah it us. was a pretty quiet year so. for us, but we still, you know, saw some pretty extreme weather as far as heat goes. Yeah. Second Ooh. most 100 degree days in a year this year. You yeah. You did have the to bring rain. that up, didn't you? I did. I did. <laughs> Where we've really been lacking is in rainfall. Our rainiest month, which is usually May, by the way, came on August, middle of September, in the middle of summer, and. Even the rainiest month was still less than the average rain that we usually see in August. Our driest month was July, when we saw a measly one one hundredth of an inch of rainfall, when in that month we should usually see a little bit more than two inches of rain. And that brings up the fact that 2022 will go down as the second driest year on record for San Antonio and records for the whole year goes back all the way to 1886. Some notable years on here, a 1950s big drought across Texas. Uh, still, we, we did not see as much rain as they did back in 1954 in San Antonio. Our warmest month was July, where we averaged nearly 90 degrees, the average being the high and the low together. We averaged nearly 90 degrees. And our coolest month was February. February was cooler than average. We got down to about 50 degrees for the average temperature. A lot of people were nervous about February this year because last February 2021 we had that winter storm. All in all though the drought will by far go down as the biggest impact from weather this year for us. Outside right now though it's a cool 44 degrees. Dew points and temperatures are pretty close to each other so in the valleys around the hills there could be some patchy fog. Right now around uh, south central Texas most of the official sites are still registering decent visibility. Good visibility is at 10 miles. Uh, again, it, it'll be in the valleys around the hills that you could see some of that fog this morning. 39 in Uvalde. Good morning in Hondo, where it's 38 degrees. 34 in Kerrville. 42 in Del Rio. 45 in New Braunfels. And 46 in Gonzales. Let's take a closer look at the metro area. 45 in Castroville. 48 in Bernie. 37 in Comfort. 34 in Kerrville. And 42 this morning in Seguin. Now, as you look at your KSAT 12-hour forecast, we're going to be sunny today. It's going to be a beautiful day. By 10, we'll be at 60 degrees. By noon, we'll be at 70, and it will be breezy, too. Take a look at those winds from the southwest at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. We could see some gusts up to 20, 25 miles per hour. So 77 for the high temperature in San Antonio, and then the party it started tonight. Here's a look at your forecast highs. 78 in Hondo, 79 in Pleasanton, 75 in Kerrville, 75 in Canyon Lake. It will probably be close to 80 in Eagle Pass in Del Rio. All right, tonight's New Year's Eve forecast for you. Sun's going to set at about 546. And at that time, uh, temperatures are going to quickly fall because of clear skies. Winds will also calm. We'll be in the 50s tonight as we ring in the new year. One thing I want you to know is that at midnight, as you know, around San Antonio, those fireworks get crazy. And the little smoke particles can actually create fog and haze. They are called cloud condensation nuclei at that time, and the clouds can condensate on those uh, those smoke particles. And so if you have to drive home tonight, um, know that there will probably be some haze and potentially even some fog from those fireworks. So please be careful. And again, it is so dry out there. Drought conditions persist. Let's turn to tomorrow. In the morning, we're going to wake up with dew points in the 40s. It'll still be you know, there'll be areas of patchy fog. It'll be chilly, but very quickly we're going to see the dew points rise. The humidity is going to rise. You'll feel it in the later afternoon and the evening hours when dew points will be in the 60s and you'll see the humidity by 
even midnight tomorrow night when fog and drizzle can develop. We'll continue to have some fog and drizzle on Monday. So Monday has the potential to have a damp commute on Monday morning with a high temperature near 78. And then here's the thing though. The good news is it's not going to stay humid for too long because a cool front Monday night to Tuesday is going to sweep away the humidity. It'll be a weak front. We're going to have mild afternoons, chilly mornings, but nothing like what we experienced over the Christmas weekend as far as the cold goes. Okay, so you threw me for a loop because when I, you started I talking know. about fireworks, I didn't know you were going to pull out the cloud condensation nuclei. Cloud condensation nuclei. I thought you were going to talk about how dry it is and the wind's going to be blowing. So if you're going to fire off those fireworks, you better be doggone careful tonight because we the, are dry as a bone. We are dry as a bone. The winds will actually not be a factor around tonight. tonight. Okay, so they'll die down. Okay, right, good. but but the fog could develop too. So okay. remember, I don't know. It's not fog, it's cloud condensation, condensation nuclei. nuclei. Yeah. Can you spell that? Yes, oh. I can. Okay, good. I good. am smart. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. How do you spell nuclei? <laughs> <laughs> work on that one. 618, 47 degrees. Here's a look at those lottery numbers. I got some bad news. I don't think nobody nobody won the big Powerball last it's night. Either, or was it Powerball or Mega Millions? It was Mega Millions. Right. It's either no. bad news or it's good news, it's right? Good news, yeah. It's I mean, still. the pot's bigger. Pick three, six, zero, nine. Fireball is seven. Daily four is two, one, seven, eight. Fireball is four. You want to read them one? Yeah, cash five, two, eight, 13, 17, 29. And here's the Mega Millions. One, three, six, 44, 51. Mega Ball seven, my, Mega Plier three. No. Welcome back, 622. Right now on KSED.com, the holidays are almost over, but that doesn't mean the fun has to stop. We've got things that are going on in town and the surrounding areas throughout January on our website, plus a list of the events going on tomorrow night or tonight for New Year's Eve. That's all online right now on KSET.com. And in case you missed it, the KSET Storyteller Special is up on KSET.com right now. You can watch what stories our talented photojournalists remembered most in 2022 as they take you behind the scenes on what goes into covering the stories that you see here on KSET on all our newscasts. It is now 622 again, 47 degrees still ahead on GMSA. The TCU Horned Frogs in the football college playoffs for the first time. We're going to take a look at their Fiesta Bowl matchup with Michigan later on this afternoon next. Looking ahead to a big sports Saturday. Spurs back in action tonight on New Year's Eve. They're hosting Luka Doncic and the Mavericks at six at the AT&T Center. <laughs> Coach Greg Poppins says, hey, the team's goal tonight is just to try to keep Luka under 50. Remember, he scored 60 earlier in the week. So once again, that tip-off is at 6. Hey, need to win to keep pace with the Eagles and the NFC East. The Cowboys beat the Titans 27-13 in Nashville Thursday night. Dallas improved to 12-4 right behind the 13-2 Eagles. The Titans rested many of their notable players knowing that their playoff hopes wouldn't be settled until next week when they play the Jacksonville Jaguars. So Tennessee didn't need to win. That said, with all those guys resting, it was kind of frustrating for Zeke not to beat the Titans by more than what they did. You know, we got the win. Uh, yeah, they, they didn't play all their guys, but all these guys get paid too. Um, still pro football, you know. And so, uh, I mean, it's not going to – you can't just, you know, expect because they're not playing all their guys for them to lay down. And, uh, I mean, those guys out there are hungry, guys who probably haven't played much all year. And they're ready to go, and, uh, and they play well. All right, Dallas can still win the NFC East if they beat the Commanders in Week 18 and if the Eagles drop their final two games to the Saints this weekend and the Giants next weekend. Dallas would own the tiebreaker thanks to a better divisional record. All right, big day today. TCU head coach is Sonny Dykes, Michigan field boss Jim Harbaugh held a photo op with the Fiesta Bowl trophy ahead of their semifinal matchup this afternoon. Look at that trophy. Ooh, that's nice. This is pretty much a new experience for most of those Horn Frogs. Five, maybe six players on our team have been to a bowl game before. The other 125 players have never participated in a, in a college football bowl game, so this is new for us. Um, but our guys have adapted incredibly well. So I think you'll see a team that's going to play hard, be excited to play, uh, you know, play physical, play a tough brand of football, um, and, and never quit. Um, you know, we've been a team that has uh, shown a lot of resilience this year and um, you know and certainly it'll be a big challenge for us playing against Michigan. Number three TCU, number two Michigan, Fiesta Bowl. That's at three o'clock this afternoon. The winner's going to face either 
fourth ranked Ohio State or number one Georgia for the national championship. Those two teams play at seven o'clock tonight. It is 628, 48 degrees. Still ahead at 630, our very own Katrina Weber is breaking down the best stories of 2022, including some wild video that was captured over this past year. And fireworks and safety, what you need to know if you plan to legally pop some fireworks tonight. Good morning. It is 630. It is Saturday, December 31st, New Year's <laughs> Eve. If you're looking out the window or kind of went outside early this morning, might have seen a little drizzle, a little fog, but oh, that's not going to last long. Today's going to be a beautiful way oh, to no, end no, the year. No. Huh? Yeah, it's going to be a great day. And in fact, it's just, there's just a little patchy fog out there. It's mm -hmm. mainly in the hills up in the hill country. Otherwise, though, it's mostly clear outside right now. We're going to see abundant sunshine. It's mostly clear and 44 degrees right now with uh, about 90% humidity. Those dew points are going to play a big factor into our weather throughout this weekend. I'll tell you what I mean coming up in just a bit. But first, if you have plans to step out the door early this morning, know it's cold in Bulverde. It's 37 degrees in Bulverde. It's 38 in Hondo, 43 in Castroville, 46 at Stinson, 42 in Seguin, and 44 in Gonzales. Now, here's a look at today's forecast. In spite of the chilly start, we're already going to be in the 60s by 10. And then by noon, we'll be at 7 degrees and in the afternoon 77. It's going to be a breezy day with winds from the southwest at 10 to 15. An occasional gust up to 20 25 miles per hour is possible. And then with the sun setting tonight, you know, everybody's going to be celebrating the new year. It's going to be a cool, clear evening. Great for firework displays. By midnight, though, things could start to get pretty hazy as the fireworks uh, start to go off. So today, a gorgeous day. 70s and breezy, as I mentioned tonight. Cool and clear, but hazy after midnight night and then the next few days muggier tomorrow with drizzle and fog possible and probable on Monday morning. I'll walk you through what you can expect over the next 48 hours and into next week coming up in just a bit. David. Thank you, Sarah. We are remembering legendary TV news anchor Barbara Walters this morning who has died at the age of 93. Hundreds of tributes pouring in for her friends and her colleagues. Her five decades of broadcasting paving the way, not only for female journalists, but for all women in media. Here's CNN's Richard Roth taking us through moments in her trailblazing career. Barbara Walters was one of the most fascinating people of any year in the television era. I know that I've done some important interviews. I know that I have been a part of history. Was she ever? Are you sorry you didn't burn the tapes? Yes, I think so, because they were private conversations. We read that you are mad. <laughs> From murderers. Why did you kill John Lennon? To movie stars. Are you a changed man since the illness? Did it affect you very much? Did you mind being thought of as sex, sex, sex? I think that what is important is to have curiosity. Uh, follow that curiosity. I'm a great believer in homework. Before people revealed all on social media, Barbara Walters was was the interviewer to open up the stars. Does he hit you? He shakes, he pushes, he, um, he swings. I'm me and, and I hope that they think that I'm fair and that I can be penetrating without being a killer. And I am, I hope. She got a reputation for making her interview guests cry. No, he never got to know. <laughs> and you won't feel so big. <laughs> After Katherine Hepburn said she felt like an old tree, Walters was cut down by critics for asking this. What kind of a tree are you? It didn't take long for Walters to become part of pop culture. Hello, this is Baba Wawa. The same network that made fun of her was where she got her big break, NBC's Today Show. It got worse when Walters, to the surprise of many, was named the first female co-anchor of a network evening newscast. I've kept time on your stories and mine tonight. You owe me four minutes. <laughs> she later described it as drowning without a life preserver. When she left The View and ABC, they named a building in her honor, a lasting monument for a woman who changed TV. I'm so proud of the women today. There are so many of them that are wonderful. That's my legacy.
A man found dead at a Northside home. San Antonio police are now investigating. This happened around four yesterday. The man believed to be in his early 40s. Police are labeling his death as suspicious and they're unsure if there was any foul play. They say there was no signs of forced entry inside the home. The Bear County Medical Examiner will conduct an autopsy sometime next week. And now to some top stories we've been following. A second driver wanted on Wednesday night street racing crash has been arrested. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says the suspect is 19 year old man Dawson Gerald McCulley taken into custody yesterday. According to Sheriff Javier Salazar, McCulley drove away from the crash after it happened. Salazar says McCulley is now facing eight felony charges. A woman and her 10 year old child were critically injured in that crash. And the names of one of the victims involved in the crash on Braun Road has been released. That crash happened near Loop 1604 in the northwest side on Thursday. San Antonio police say 25 year old Armando Lerma died when the vehicle he was in slammed into a tree. Also in the vehicle, a 19 year old man whose name has not yet been released. Police say speed was a factor. Both men died at the scene. All boil water notices have been lifted for residents in Bear, Kerr and Bandera counties. Water pressure was restored to a normal level for the remaining communities listed right there on your screen. It happened on Monday around 2000 Texas water utility customers were placed under a boil water notice after the water pressure dropped. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. In this past year, there have been plenty of pictures in our newscast that have said a whole lot. Katrina Weber and photojournalist Asian Bermia cover a lot of stories for GMSA during the week, and they put together some of the most shocking videos that we saw throughout the year. Long before you could hear the crackling, there was no missing the flames. Unfortunately, we saw beloved businesses like this become raging infernos on more than one occasion. I don't know what we're going to do now, but anyway, we do thank all the customers. In March, it was the popular Hakala Mexican restaurant and decades of memories that burned to the ground. One month later, a Southside community saw the decades old Guardian Angel daycare crumble under the heat. Another morning brought another raging fire, taking down the former Midnight Rodeo Bar in November. And almost one month later to the day, trouble that started inside Denny's near I-10 and Foster Road swallowed up the entire building, which also included Flying J's truck stop. A truck and two trains move into the second spot on my list, two separate stories that stopped me in my tracks. Not far from General Hud Nellen Highway 90, a pickup left unrecognizable after slamming into two parked trains in May. Two people were able to run away from this wreck, but a separate mishap on some tracks in August left the man trapped. Firefighters had to rescue the stowaway from Eagle Pass, who was stuck inside a freight car for more than 12 hours. In the third spot is the image from August of an Amazon truck poking out from the front of a restaurant near I-35. That driver wasn't hurt, but packages scattered all over the parking lot. Also escaping injury, but not my list, is a woman saved by her TV. She was standing at the door and the TV was in front of her. A neighbor told us the wide screen took a bullet meant for someone else. All right, follow me. A ghostly doll named Sarah, who we met around Halloween, haunts the final spot on the list. With eyes like hers, it's easy to see why she captures attention. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A lot of good stuff happened over this last year. A lot of great video. And we thank our photojournalists for getting out there and, and covering those stories for you. Hey, it is 640. It is 48 degrees. Stocking up on fireworks for the big celebration tonight. Well... It's legal in San Antonio, but coming up, we spoke with the county fire marshal about firework safety and making sure if those fireworks are going off, it's outside of the city limits. And live cam. If you look in certain areas, you can see the stars. If you look in other areas, you see fog. Kind of weird morning, but this afternoon, it's gonna be sunny and bright. Sarah spivey has got your forecast coming up. Welcome back. It is 644. People across Texas are ready to welcome the new year with a bang, as well as some booms and maybe some sparkles. Right. The final days of the year are one of the few times when retail fireworks can be sold in the state. And Garrett Berger talked with the county fire marshal about making sure that if you do decide to pop fireworks, it's done safely and legally. The stars at night are big and bright. 
deep in the heart of Texas. And it's even more true on New Year's Eve when the fireworks go off. Well, I like the big ones. There are a lot of options for lighting up the sky. You have 500 gram cakes, we have mortars, we have bottle rockets, we have missiles. But there are also a lot of ways they can go wrong. We've had situations where people have literally lost fingers or maybe lost an eye. Basic precautions include general safe handling and not shooting them at each other or out of cars, which is illegal and supervising kids who use them. Just because somebody's an adult doesn't mean they're a responsible adult, right? So we don't want to mix alcohol and fireworks. The Bear County Fire Marshal says to find a place with short or no grass and away from other vegetation. The remnants of that uh, mortar or that firework will drift. Lopez says all the Bear County cities have ordinances against fireworks, so you need to be an unincorporated Bear County to use them. Even in Bear County, there's places you can't use fireworks, like near a church. Same thing goes for schools. And definitely not next to the store you just bought them from. Come on. We have more safety tips online at ksat.com. As for the types of fireworks, we have God's Wrath, we have Warzone, we have Warfield, we have Ultra Mag, we have a Terminator. Leave those to you to find out. Those names, man. Those are some big fireworks. God's Wrath and Terminator. So now if you're going to go someplace where it is legal to shoot them, remember it's dry. Very, very dry. And you were talking about wind blowing today, but it shouldn't be a problem tonight. Later on tonight, the winds be. will, will okay. calm down. It, that's going to have an interesting effect because we could actually see some haze develop with, wow. the, fireworks with the fireworks and smoke so. and condensation and you guys have been showing every Thursday you show the drought monitor yeah and there is a bullseye right the reddest part of Texas is right over Bear County yep. and Comel County and Kendall and County Kendall County is like it's very dry yeah it's not it's, as dry outside as it was you know when in the summer but it's still it's still dry it's still very dry so if you're gonna shoot the firework make sure you got some water with you a hose or something out there that's right? good advice there david and if you're planning on enjoying uh, the evening outside outside sunset's going to be around 5 45 and tonight you know those winds are going to be calming down during the day the winds will be pretty gusty but tonight with calming winds clear skies temperatures are going to cool down quickly we'll be in the 50s by 10 around midnight it'll be in the mid 50s and and again the little smoke particles from the fireworks that go off because temperatures are going to be at least kind of close to the dew point that could actually end up uh, impacting the visibility if you're planning on going home tonight after midnight know that there could be some haze and some fog out there in in parts of south central texas outside right now though clear skies around san antonio you can see the stars actually out there on live cam it's 44 degrees outside chilly this morning but it's not going to be chilly this afternoon temperatures are going to climb into the upper 70s in the afternoon it's 50 in bernie 37 in bulverde 45 in new Braunfels, 45 in castroville 38 in hondo 35 in kerrville and in comfort good morning in Givaldi. it's 40 degrees we're also seeing some areas of patchy fog in the valleys around the hill country so if you live north of downtown san antonio if you live along 281 or up i-10 know that in some of those areas there could be some patchy fog shouldn't be that much of an issue because as soon as we see the sunrise that fog is going to go away and it's going to be a beautiful sunny day for us we're in the mid 40s right now but by 10 60 degrees and by noon 70 degrees and in the afternoon 77 for the high temperature sunny and 77 to end the year our average high temperature this time of year is 63 so we're going to be much above that by 14 degrees it's also going to be a bit breezy today if you have picnics or activities outside you might want to weigh down some of the lightweight items we'll have winds from the southwest sustained at 10 to 15 an occasional gust up to 25 miles per hour is possible during the first part of the day here in your neighborhood. It'll be 78 in Castroville, 78 in Floresville, near 80 in Poteet and in Pleasanton, 77 in New Braunfels and Seguin, 75 in Kerrville and Comfort and 77 in Bandera. Let's take a look at the weather setup across the nation right now. There's plenty of rainfall across the Mississippi River Valley and points east and even into Florida as well. And then off to the west, there's a lot of rain right now over San Francisco. Uh, this is a low pressure system with a cold front. This is going to be moving through San Antonio Monday in the evening hours, sweeping away the humidity, but it's not going to drop 
temperatures too much. So let me take you through the future cast over the next few days. Early tomorrow morning, uh, again, I think we'll have some areas of patchy fog. It'll be 50 degrees early tomorrow morning. And then in the afternoon, we should see some sunshine, but at the same time, Gulf moisture is going to increase. So we'll have a partly cloudy afternoon on Sunday tomorrow. High temperature right near 75, pretty pleasant, but you will notice that increasing humidity. Then by Monday morning, you'll really notice the humidity because you'll see it in the form of drizzle and fog early on Monday with some uh, temperatures in the 60s. That front is not going to bring us any substantial rain here in South Texas, but it is going to allow for some severe storms possible across East Texas and Louisiana. Now, as we look ahead, that front will move through Monday and allow for the humidity to come down. But notice that temperatures are going to still kind of be pretty mild. We're going to have chilly mornings, comfortable afternoons for the first week of 2023. And speaking of the new year, coming up at 8, I'm going to wrap up this year weather-wise. Weather-wise? Yeah. We'll talk about some extremes, how hot we got and how cold we got. You're going to go through all the days of 100 plus? <laughs> Maybe, just maybe. Ooh, I'll have to wait and see. <laughs> All right, it is 650 and 48 degrees. Did you know, Sarah, that today is National Champagne Day? Wow, ooh. <laughs> but it'll sound like later on tonight all over town. How convenient, though, that uh, New Year's Eve is National Champagne Day. Ooh, who would have thunk? Tidbits about it coming up. And Trans Guide. This is where you come in. All right, things are flowing smoothly. You know, Loop 410, Jackson Keller, things are okay. All in all, we don't anticipate too many issues on the roads, but we'll continue to keep you updated if crashes happen and you need to know about those things. Lottery numbers as we go to break. Nobody won Powerball. So last Nobody night, was Mega, it was Mega Millions last night when I keep getting them confused because I didn't win. So, you know, <laughs> pick three, six, zero, nine. Fireball is seven and daily four is two, one, seven, eight. Fireball is four. Cash five, two, eight, 13, 17, 29. And the big one, Mega Millions, one, three, six, 44, 51. Ooh. Mega Ball seven, Mega Plier three. No winner. Well, pairing nicely with New Year's Eve, it is National Champagne Day, so pop a bottle open and enjoy a toast to the new year or celebrate a recent accomplishment. Of course, please drink responsibly. If you don't drink, there are non-alcoholic versions. Some fun facts, a standard bottle of champagne has about 49 million bubbles, Ooh. three times the carbonation of beer. And How the do they know that? They, do they count those? They can count it, they can. And David, the Champagne region of France produces more than 200 million Ooh. bottles a year. Year. And under French law, only eight varieties of grapes can wow. be used for champagne. Just because it's sparkling doesn't mean it's champagne. Wow, that's interesting. That's a lot of bubbles. It is a lot of bubbles. Do you, uh, like, have you ever opened up a bottle of champagne? Have you ever, like, shake it up and, like, let it spray like everywhere? celebratory? Because then you're... Yes, but here's the way to do it. It's like, you smell like champagne for, like, a week. I know, but this is celebratory. Okay. Here's the way to do it. You actually want to make as little noise as you can uh -huh. while opening it, because then all the carbonation stays in the That's bottle. That's no fun. you got to have, like, a loud You can pop. savor it, too. Yeesh. Oh, dangerous. <laughs> 655, 49 degrees. We'll be right back. Well, sun's coming up here soon, and it is going to be a sunny day for us. We're starting off in the 40s, but guess what? In just a couple of hours, three hours, we'll be at 60 degrees. 70 at noon, and the afternoon high is at about 77. Winds will be from the southwest breezy at 5 to 15, gusting up to 25 miles per hour at times. But tonight, those winds will calm. Sun's going to set at 546. If you have plans this evening, know that it's going to be cool and clear. And right around midnight, when those fireworks start going off, we could start to see some areas of haze. Looking ahead to tomorrow, it will start at 50 degrees with patchy fog in the morning and then 75 for the high. In the afternoon, you'll feel a little bit more humidity and you'll definitely notice the humidity by Monday morning when we'll be in the mid 60s with areas of fog and drizzle and high temperature near 80 degrees. Then as we look ahead to the remainder of the week, we'll have less humidity from Tuesday through Friday, chilly mornings in the 40s, afternoons in the 60s and 70s. A great way to start off the year if I don't you don't oh, not bad at all so so if uh, this is the last time we're going to be with you throughout the rest of this day we wish you the best and have a wonderful New Year's Eve and please be safe absolutely tonight. we'll be back at eight talking we'll be back about at eight if you want to come back then uh, the year in review and weather as well all right thanks so much for joining us
Have a great Saturday. Good morning to you. We want to start this morning with some breaking news from the Vatican. Former Pope Emeritus Benedict the 16th has passed away at the age of 95. That announcement just coming a few hours ago. Benedict was the leader of the Catholic Church for less than eight years until 2013 when he became the first pope to resign since Gregory the 12th in 1415. Benedict spent his final years with the walls of the Vatican. ABC's Inez de la Catera has more for us. It's not just his papacy, but the way it ended, defining Pope Benedict XVI's legacy. In February 2013, Benedict became the first pope in 600 years to resign. He cited his advanced age and failing health, stepping aside as Pope Francis was elected, and Benedict became the first Pope Emeritus in modern history, living out his final years in a former monastery on the Vatican grounds, at times joining Pope Francis at major church events. He was born in Germany in 1927 as Joseph Ratzinger. Shortly after he turned 14, he, like most young Germans at the time, was forced to join the Hitler Youth, but he was not a willing participant. When he returned to Germany as pontiff, he became only the second pope in history to visit a synagogue. He was elected pontiff on April 19, 2005 to fill the vacancy left by Pope John Paul II. He chose the name Benedict XVI. He had been known as God's Rottweiler, an unyielding conservative and guardian of traditional Catholic values, but he soon surprised his skeptics, showing his gentler side. Benedict never veered far from his conservative beliefs. He condemned gay marriage, the ordination of women, and allowing priests to marry. He also addressed the sex abuse crisis within the Catholic Church, meeting privately with victims of pedophile priests during his trip to the U.S. in 2008. No words of mine could describe the pain and harm inflicted by such abuse. But some say that scandal, the Pope seemed unable to put to rest, eventually played a role in his resignation, his retirement, shaking up the Vatican, securing his place in history. In de la Quatera, ABC News, Rome. And we will have more on Benedict as new information becomes available. Plus, we've got the latest on the passing of broadcasting icon Barbara Walters. She died yesterday at the age of 93. But for now, good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is Saturday. It is December 31st. <laughs> That's the last day of the year, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty nice day to end the year on. How does sunny and 77 sound? Dave? Sounds like San Antonio. Exactly. <laughs> the only thing we could want more is some rain, but this year is going to go down as the second driest year on record. Ooh, it's dry. Right. Yeah, records have been kept since 1880. You always show your um, drought monitors. Yeah. It's like a bullseye right on San Antonio and Bear County. And I guess Comel County and Kirkland, yeah. man. We're the part of the state that suffered the most definitely from drought. Well, we feel but it. At least it's going to be nice today, right, as we ring in the new year. Outside right now, sunny skies, chilly to start the day. Temperatures are in the 40s. It's 40, uh, 44 degrees outside right now around San Antonio. And elsewhere, we're seeing temperatures starting to rise. It's 46 uh, in San Antonio, actually, right now. That temperature just popped up. 42 in Seguin, 42 in New Braunfels, and 46 in Canyon Lake. Temperatures in the 30s across the hill country, 35 in Kerrville and 34 in Comfort. Now as we look ahead to the rest of this weekend, today 77 for the high. Tonight it'll be nice, 50s as we ring in the new year. Some haze may develop from all the fireworks that get let off around San Antonio. And tomorrow we'll start with some patchy fog and a little bit of mugginess in the afternoon, 75. I'll be back with a look at what you can expect as you ring in the new year tonight and we'll talk Talk about some dampness in the forecast soon. David. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one man is in the hospital after an argument became violent at a Mexican restaurant on the city's west side earlier this morning. Our comedian Juarez is at the Bucanero Mexican restaurant where police are giving her some information. So what have they told you so far, Camelia? David, San Antonio police say two men were arguing in the parking lot of this Mexican restaurant off of Marbach Road around two this morning. The argument escalated and one person pulled out a gun. 
Police say he fired several shots and some of those bullets struck a 36 year old man. That man was rushed to University Hospital with serious injuries. It's unclear if the men knew each other and San Antonio police are still investigating. They did not provide a description of the shooter at this time. But for now, reporting live from the west side, Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Hey, Camelia, the second driver wanted in that Wednesday night racing crash has been arrested. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says the suspect is 19-year-old Dawson Gerald McCulley. He was arrested yesterday, according to Sheriff Javier Salazar. McCulley drove away from the crash right after it happened. A woman and her 10-year-old child critically injured in that crash. Salazar says McCulley is now facing eight felony charges. And Bear County Sheriff's deputies also arrested the other driver they say was involved, 33-year-old Hammer John Phelan. He's charged with several felony counts, including injury to a child and street racing. And we've got an update on a deadly crash that killed two men yesterday morning on Braun Road. The name of one of the victims has been released. San Antonio police say 25-year-old Armando Lerma died when the vehicle he was, he was in slammed into a tree. Also in that vehicle, 19-year-old whose name has not been released. The crash happened near Loop 1604 on the northwest side. Police say speed was a factor. Both men died at the scene. It is now 8.06, 49 degrees, still coming up in this half hour. Senior citizens will soon get that big hike in their Social Security benefits. What can you expect in the new year coming up? And after the break, rideshare companies are gearing up for New Year's Eve celebrations. What drivers are doing to prepare for some wild party goers later on tonight. And outside with live cam. A little chilly right now, but Sarah Hills is going to warm up this afternoon. Be an absolutely gorgeous South Texas day to send out the old and ring in the new. Later on tonight, as you would expect, New Year's Eve going to be full of celebrations everywhere as we usher in 2023. That means another big night for Uber and Lyft drivers. They're expected to be pretty busy picking up and dropping off party goers tonight. Unless Cole buckled up one rideshare driver's car to see what he's expecting this evening. When you think of New Year's Eve, you may think of parties and drinking. And those thoughts fall in line with research that shows New Year's Eve is the number one binge drinking holiday among American adults. If you do decide to go out and party, which is fine, then it's better to get a Lyft or an Uber. I feel like it would be better to, you know, take a ride from somebody else, then drink and drive. And Don't drink and drive. It's part of the reason why some people are planning their rides ahead of time. I think it is better to use a ride share, Uber or Lyft. That's why Uber and Lyft drivers like Capone de Leon is preparing for a big night, anticipating a surge of ride share requests. I'm probably going to work uh, from about 3 in the afternoon till about 10 at night. And uh, that should get me the afternoon uh, ride home traffic and then getting people to the parties. He's driving on New Year's Eve to make some extra money for his family. We're in this recession <laughs> and I need to get out there and hustle. And he says the job definitely has its challenges, like fighting traffic while chauffeuring intoxicated passengers. His message for riders is to keep in mind ride share etiquette. Is the young people really tip. The older generation, don't say apps that we're using are taking something like 60% of the income. De Leon says New Year's Eve night, he's making it his mission to make sure his riders get home safely. I'm so proud of what I see young people making that choice to take a Uber or a, a Lyft so they don't drive. That's the greatest thing. Authorities say New Year's Eve and day are one of the deadliest times for DWI related crashes and San Antonio police will have additional officers throughout the city to keep an eye out for drunk drivers tomorrow night. Alyssa Cole, case at 12 news. There's a lot to unpack in that story. First of all, <laughs> I mean, that's great advice. Take a take a ride share. Oh, yeah, yeah take don't a even. Share. Yeah, don't even think about it. But the part that made our ears perk up. <laughs> was that the older generation doesn't tip as much as the younger generation. That, makes, that was a little surprising, but it makes total sense in my mind. Okay, how? Because most recently we have been in the service industry and we know how much uh -huh. tipping counts. And so we give more tips Okay. as the younger generation. Whereas, you know, it used to not be such a 
a necessity for people. Is there a, is, do you use a number? Do you go like 15%, 20%, 25%? Or do you go, go by how good their service was? I usually go 20% no matter what. Yeah. And then 25 if they're really good. And then if it's like exceptional, I'll just give a, a chunk of money. That's, that's pretty much in line with, with what I do. Way to go, David. And I'm old. He's er. the exception to the rule. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, by the way, we also mentioned the fact that yeah, Uber and Lyfts may be a little more expensive tonight, but they won't be near as much as what it would cost you to go through a DWI oh court case and all that. I think the last time we did a story on that, it was like ten grand, oh and that goodness. was like a couple of years ago, if I remember. So it may be more than that now. So wow, pay for the Uber and Lyft or the, or the cab. Just don't drive. Uh, don't and drink. we'll get to that forecast for yeah. tonight. But I thought we could wrap up the year first and talk okay. about, you know, how, the Ooh. year in review, right? So yeah. our rainiest month, and it was a very dry year, our rainiest month was August, summer, when we usually see at least two uh, and 15 hundredths of an inch of rain. Our rainiest month only brought us two and a 10 hundredths of an inch of rain, which is less than the average for the month of August. Our driest month was July, when we only received a measly one one hundredth of an inch of rainfall, when in July we usually get more than two inches of rain. July, hottest month too for us, one of the hottest months for us. And take a look at this uh, data here. 2022 is going to go down as the second driest year on record for San Antonio. Records go all the way back to 1886 for the whole year. Notable years on here. If you know the weather around San Antonio, you know how bad the 50s were for South Texas. And you can see 2022 drier than that back in the 50s. Really impressive when you think about the lack of rain we've seen. And again, our hottest month was July when we averaged nearly 90 degrees. The average temperature is the, the temperature uh, average of the afternoon high and the after and the morning low. So we averaged nearly 90 degrees and our coldest month. We got a bit of a break in February when we averaged about 50 degrees outside right now. Things are nice and cool out there, but plenty of uh, sunshine for us. It's 46 degrees. Winds are calm at the moment, but we're likely going to see those winds pick up over the next hour or so. It's 39 in Hondo. Good morning in Eagle Pass. It's 39 degrees, 35 in Kerrville, 42 in New Braunfels, 44 in Pleasanton, and 46 here in San Antonio. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for a very quick warm up. In fact, you can see the bug at the bottom of the screen that updates a little bit quicker. It's already 50 degrees. It'll be 60 around around 10 70 around noon and notice that those winds pick up from the southwest at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. That's a sustained wind. We could actually see a few gusts of up to 20 25 miles per hour as well. 77 in the afternoon high and then tonight temperatures will fall into the 60s shortly after sunset. And speaking of high temperatures, 77 is quite a bit warmer than average or average is 63 this time of year. It'll be nearly 80 degrees in Eagle Pass in Crisis Springs as well as in Del Rio. It'll be nearly 80 in Pleasanton, 78 in Gonzales and mid 70s for the Hill Country. So tonight's forecast calls after the the sun sets at 546 for a quick cool down because winds will calm down and we'll have clear skies. That's a good recipe to see temperatures fall. So by midnight when we're bringing in the new year, it'll be in the mid 50s cool and it is possible that haze could develop after midnight because of all the fireworks. They've got uh, little smoke particles act as what was the word, David? Something, something nuclei cloud condensation nuclei. Ooh. The smoke will act like that and it could actually allow for fog to develop quicker and some haze as well. So that's possible after midnight. If you are responsibly driving home, you'll know that you might have to deal with some of that fog. Then tomorrow humidity will be on the rise during the day, so much so that by the late evening hours, fog and drizzle could develop. And as we look ahead to your Sunday forecast again in the early morning, some patchy fog, 75 humidity. Humidity will be rising. A nice day, though. And then Monday, morning fog and drizzle, high temperature near 80 degrees. Thankfully, that humidity gets swept out. And so for the remainder of the first week of 2023, we'll be looking at chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons in the 60s and 70s. By the way, I'll have more of the year in review. We'll talk about our hottest heat index this year Ooh. versus our coldest wind chill this year. Next Was it extreme one to the other? Very extreme. Very extreme? Yeah. I'm just, 
You got nuclei. Fired up about cloud condensation <laughs> nuclei. It's New Year's Eve, and we're still learning weather terms. It's we don't science stop. Science with Sarah. Science with this <laughs> awesome hey. stuff. Cloud <laughs> condensation nuclei. 817, 50 degrees. Still coming up on GMSA. New Year means some new movies in Hollywood, which you can expect to see in theaters in January. And if you didn't buy a lotto ticket this week, don't worry, nobody won it. So you can still <laughs> pick up on the big jackpot. We're gonna look at how big that pot is gonna be. Coming up. And speaking of that lottery, your pick Ooh. three is 609 Fireball 7. Daily 4, 2, 1, 7, 8, Fireball 4. Cash 5 is 2, 8, 13, 17, 29. And here are those Mega Millions numbers from last night that apparently did not match anywhere across the country. 1, 3, 6, 44, 51. Mega Ball is 7, Mega Plier is 3. Somebody might have won a couple of bucks, though. Buy more tickets with those bucks. Not me. We'll see you after <laughs> the break. Welcome back. It is 821. Senior citizens and other Social Security recipients will start getting a larger monthly benefit in January. The 8.7% annual cost of living adjustment is aimed at helping them cope with the high inflation we're having to deal with these days. It's the largest increase in over 40 years. It's going to boost retirees' monthly payments by more than $140 to an average of roughly $1,827 for 2023. About 70 million people are going to get that increase. And looking ahead, Mega Millions lottery buyers, we were just talking about this, are going to have to wait until the new year to win the Powerball jackpot. So far, the Associated Press reports there were no lucky winners matching all six numbers in last night's drawing. So the jackpot is expected to grow to at least $785 million ahead of next drawing, which comes up next Tuesday night. The record Mega Millions jackpot, remember this one? $1.5 billion back in 2018. And a jackpot that was a little more than $1.3 billion was won in Illinois this last July. So $785 million wouldn't be a bad, wouldn't be a bad win. So we we'll have to wait till next year. It's 822. It's 50 degrees. Coming up next, the end of 2022. Doesn't mean the party has to stop. We've got to look at some movies that are coming out this January. In your morning spotlight, a new batch of movies headed our way in theaters next month. Tom Hanks, Hugh Jackman, and a Kendrick have new movies coming out. CNN's Rick Damagella gives us a quick preview of what they look like. I designed Megan to protect Katie from feeling lonely. The new year starts off scary with the sci-fi horror yarn Megan starring Allison Williams. Megan creeps into theaters January 6th. I'm sorry you didn't get him here earlier. The whole neighborhood is falling apart these days. Tom Hanks plays the local grump whose new neighbors try to help him in A Man Called Otto. The dramedy debuted in limited release over the holidays and goes into wide release January 13th. We just really want you to relax. Relax in what way? Anna Kendrick plays a woman in an abusive relationship in Alice Darling. The thriller arrives in theaters January 20th. It's my little boy. I can't give up on it. Also opening on the 20th is the family drama The Sun, starring Hugh Jackman as a divorced father struggling between his old and new life. Something doesn't feel right. Jennifer Lopez and Josh Demel cordially invite you to Shotgun Wedding. Guests can dress casual for the action comedy when it debuts on Prime Video January 27th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Some interesting flicks coming up next January, so look for those in your local theater. 827, 50 degrees, coming up next. In the next half hour, good morning, San Antonio. Shooting outside a restaurant sent a man to the hospital while police search for a suspect. Mia Warriors is live at the scene. She's got the latest details for us. And it's a murder mystery case that made headlines across the nation. And now a suspect has been arrested connected to the killings of four college students in Idaho. We've got new details in your morning headlines coming up. And good morning. It is 831. If you had just waking up with us, yes, it is December 31st. Yes, this is the last day of 2022. A lot of people are excited about it being the last day. Some people might miss 2022, but regardless, 
few hours, it's going to be a new year. It is going to be a new year, and I'm hoping dry. for rain in the new year, David. It has been <laughs> miserably dry around San Antonio this year. Would you say the second driest? Second driest on year on record. Ooh. We've only seen for the whole year 11 and a half inches of rain, and we usually see 32 inches of rain. So we are We're a little short. Very short by almost two feet. <laughs> I know, impressive. You know, but today is going to be a really nice day to round out the year. Uh, outside right now, sunny skies, 46 degrees out there. Winds are calm at the moment, but they are going to pick up today. Let's take a look at temperatures around the metro area. Kind of a mixed bag right now as things are just starting to warm up into the 50s for many. It's 52 in a Lotus, 52 in Bernie. Uh, it's 45 still in Converse, 42 in Seguin. Still in the 30s, though, up in the Hill Country earlier this morning. Up in the hills and valleys of the hill country, there was some patchy fog that has since dissipated and we're looking at completely sunny skies. So here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast. Some things I want you to keep in mind today. Gorgeous, beautiful 70s. It is going to be a little breezy, though, with winds from the southwest. But tonight, those winds will calm down. And as you're ringing in the new year around midnight, it's going to be cool and clear in the 50s. But with fireworks going off uh, and uh, temperatures close to the dew point, it could actually get pretty hazy after midnight. So plan accordingly. And then in the next few days, you'll notice the humidity a little bit more tomorrow, and you'll definitely notice it by Monday when we'll have drizzle and fog. But coming up, we're going to have a look ahead toward uh, that drizzle and fog potentially on Monday. I'll have a look at that forecast for you in just a few minutes. David. Thank you. Well, the new year is fast approaching, and of course, we can expect to see some of the road closures continue well into 2023. Let's talk about what you can expect starting here off Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. This will start on Monday, January 2nd. Asphalt work will take place, and that should wrap pretty quickly on January 16th, but it is overnight. So keep in mind, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when we will see alternating closures on the frontage roads. That will be in both directions from Bandera Road to Marbach Road. All right, let's take a leap over here to I-35, this time on the northeast side of San Antonio where we will see illumination work take place. Very fancy word there. Tuesday, January 3rd, up until Saturday, January 7th. Again, overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. That's when you'll see multiple right lane closures on I-35 southbound, those main lanes between Topperwine Road and Judson Road. One last look here at Loop 410 on the northeast side of San Antonio, where drilling work will take place on Wednesday, January 4th. That begins at 9 in the evening and should wrap at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's when we will see right shoulder closures on the Loop 410 eastbound between between Vital and Interchange Parkway. But of course, I know it's a lot of information, so scan this QR code that has now popped up on your screen that will take you to our KSAT traffic page, and that should have you updated on a full list of closures that we will see take place in the early days of January, and we'll keep you posted in the new year. Also new this morning, one man is in the hospital after an argument became violent at a Mexican restaurant on the city's west side early this morning. A Camilla Juarez is at Buccanero Mexican restaurant. What are police telling you so far, Camilla? Any updates? Well, David, right now we know that San Antonio police tell us that two men were arguing in this parking lot at this restaurant that is off of Marbach Road. And around two this morning, that argument escalated um, and one person pulled out a gun. Police say he fired several shots and some of those bullets struck a 36 year old man. That man was rushed to University Hospital with serious injuries. It's unclear if the men knew each other and San Antonio police are still investigating. They're still working this and they have not yet provided a description of the shooter that is still um, out there. Um, reporting live on the west side, Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. Also new this morning, one man shot on the head while driving after an argument on a, at a club on the city's northwest side. San Antonio police say two men got into an argument in a club near Vance Jackson before it escalated. Police say one man followed the other in a vehicle, began firing several shots, striking the driver in the head. The suspect drove off the victim taken to University Hospital where he is expected to be OK. Meanwhile, water is once again safe to drink for all Texas Water Utilities customers in Bear County, Kerr County and Bandera counties. All boil water notices have been rescinded. Water pressure was restored to normal levels for the remaining communities listed on your screen there. Around 2000 Texas Water Utility customers were placed under a boil water notice after the water pressure dropped this past Monday, but things are good now. And topping your morning headlines, former Pope Benedict the 16th has died at his Vatican residence at the age of 95. This comes almost a decade after he stepped down because of his ailing health. 
He led the Catholic Church for less than eight years until 2013 when he became the first pope to resign since Gregory XII back in 1415. Benedict spent his final years within the walls of the Vatican. He stepped aside as Pope Francis was elected and becoming the first pope emeritus in modern history. Meanwhile, legendary TV news anchor Barbara Walters has died at the age of 93. Walters joined ABC News back in 1976. She became the first female anchor ever on an evening news program. Three years later, she became the co-host of 2020 and went on to launch The View back in 1997. It continues to air these days 25 years later. She was known for her legendary interviews of world leaders and celebrities, which won her 12 Emmy Awards over her career. Her five decades in broadcasting paved the way not only for female journalists, but for all women in media. According to a statement, Walters passed away peacefully in her home, surrounded by her loved ones. And this morning, a major break in the investigation into a quadruple murder that has gripped the nation. Police say they've arrested a suspect in the death of four University of Idaho college students. The suspect tracked down and taken into custody thousands of miles away. ABC's Andy Fields has the details for us. Nearly seven weeks after four University of Idaho students were found stabbed to death, police arresting a suspect, identifying him as Brian Koberger. The 28-year-old arrested Friday morning at a home 2,500 miles away from campus in a town in Pennsylvania's Pocono Mountains. ABC's Matt Rivers is there. So it's in this gated community just behind me that a SWAT team, including the FBI and Pennsylvania State Police, swooped into the suspect's parents' home around 2 a.m. Investigators revealing Koberger is a graduate student at Washington State University just 10 miles away from the University of Idaho. Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zaner Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin were all found dead in this house in Moscow where the women lived. The two other roommates were not injured. These murders have shaken our community and no arrest will ever bring back these young students. We do believe justice will be found through the criminal process. Kaylee's father, Steve Gonzalez, says he will be there when the suspect is brought to Idaho. This guy's going to have to look me in my eyes multiple times, and uh, I'm going to be looking for the truth. The parents of Ethan Chapin saying, we are relieved this chapter is over because it provides a form of closure. However, it doesn't alter the outcome or alleviate the pain. We miss Ethan and our family is forever changed. Investigators say DNA evidence led them to Kohlberger, but they wouldn't say if he knew any of the victims. The murder weapon also has not yet been recovered. Kohlberger now charged with four counts of first degree murder and one count of felony burglary. A sigh of relief for this small college town. It'll be a massive exhale for a lot of people. Kohlberger due back in court in Pennsylvania for an extradition hearing on Tuesday. Andy Field, ABC News. It is now 839 and 51 degrees. Still to come at 830, final preparations are being made in Times Square ahead of the big famous ball drop coming up in just a few hours. And also coming up next, when your New Year's Eve headache drops like the big city ball, you'll be desperate for some relief. We'll look at some popular recipes for a hangover cure. Is there really a hangover cure? Well, we'll find out in a minute. Outside with Lack Emily, this beautiful day we're having. Wow, what a way to send out the old year and ring in the new. Sarah Spive has got your forecast coming up. A little warmer than usual. It's 51 now, a little chilly, but it's going to warm up today. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It is 8.43. We're creeping ever so close we to are. New Year's Eve. It's just about here. And the last hurrah of 2022. And many celebrate with a glass of champagne or mm. two. But what happens if those two glasses turn into mm. four or five? Nancy Alvarez looks into so-called hangover remedies and reports on what works and what doesn't. At the end of the evening, I was hugging that big white bowl. <laughs> The next morning, we just did not remember anything, so it was bad. I was throwing up the whole next day. It's likely you have your own hangover story. The most hungover day of the year is, you guessed it, New Year's Day. But what do you do to ease your pain? I try to sweat it out, like go work out. The latest trend on TikTok has us all freezing just thinking about it. Oh, that's so unpleasant. Oh. Dunking your face in a bowl of ice water. A pharmacist out of Texas claims by keeping your face submerged for 15 seconds, it turns on part of your brain that's responsible for digestion. There's no scientific proof it works. Another myth that having a drink the morning after will help. 
Experts say having a drink the next day will actually prolong your pain. So what does science say you should do? First up, drink water. Dehydration contributes to increased thirst, fatigue, headaches, and dizziness. Eat a good breakfast. It helps to maintain steady blood sugar levels. And science shows low blood sugar can worsen nausea, fatigue, and weakness. New research also shows in small studies, red ginseng reduced blood alcohol levels and hangover severity. Prickly pear extract halved the risk of experiencing severe symptoms, and ginger may protect against alcohol-induced liver damage. Just a few reminders that may help you if your head is still ringing the morning after. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. All right, so here's the question. So if it's supposed to be a big breakfast, do you yeah. eat it right after you've indulged, or do you go home and go to sleep and then get up and eat the breakfast? Because, you know, a lot of people stop at, uh, you know, what, Waffle House or Denny's or Water something and start sucking down breakfast sandwiches Taco at Bell <laughs> 2 o'clock in the morning. So Hey, whatever floats know. your boat, whatever uh, makes you feel better, right? You know how you, you keep from waking up with a headache? How? Don't drink. All right, David. <laughs> Easier said than done for some folks. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a look at 2022's extremes. Now, David, I'm, this is a really fun graphic I want you to look at. So back in December, just recently, we had the coldest wind chill for the year clocking wow. in at zero degrees. It felt like that zero degrees. That was just a couple days ago. a couple days ago. Yeah, all right. A week ago. Meanwhile, Whoa. on July 12th, we had a heat index of 108. So in the span of a year here in Texas, in San Antonio, you can feel 108 degrees different across the whole year. Yeah, Texas has a lot of weather. It's one of the reasons why I love being a meteorologist. So just one of the examples of, yeah, even though it was a quiet year, we did have a lot of different weather out there this year. Right now, outside, beautiful blue skies. Temperatures are starting to warm up. We're getting into the 50s, although the airport's still reading about 46 degrees, but temperatures are rising. It's 53 in a Lotus, 54 in Bernie, 48 in Castroville, 51 in Divine, 45 in Converse, and 42 in New Braunfels. We are quickly going to be seeing temperatures rise into the 60s as early as 10 o'clock just within the next hour and then by noon we'll be in the low 70s and in the afternoon temperatures are going to climb to 77 for the high. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon to get maybe a walk in enjoy some time outside uh, before celebrating later on tonight and speaking of tonight Skies are going to be clear, winds are going to calm, and we'll see temperatures drop. More on tonight's forecast in a bit, but I do want to bring your attention to the fact that it is going to be a breezy day. During the day today, we'll have winds from the southwest at 10 to 15, but we could have a few wind gusts of up to 25, 30 miles per hour, even occasionally at times. So it is going to be a breezy day. If you have plans maybe for a, a backyard barbecue or a grill, just know that you're going to want to weigh down things because of the winds. It'll be 78 in Castroville close to 80 degrees around San Antonio today as we end the year. That's impressive given the fact that the average uh, high temperature is 63. So we're going to be some 14, 15 degrees above the average today. It'll be 77 in New Braunfels, 78 in Gonzales and in Uvalde. It'll be in the mid 70s across of the hill country. All right, let's get to tonight's forecast for you. As you're celebrating the new year, know that it's going to get cool pretty quickly. So with the sun setting at 546, it'll still be in the 70s at that time. But by 10, it'll be in the 50s and right around midnight, 54 degrees around midnight as we ring in the new year. So bring the light jacket with you wherever you're going. And if you're going to be driving responsibly home after midnight, know that all of the smoke particles could allow for some haze and even some patchy fog to develop later on tonight beyond midnight. A lot of people going to be uh, popping fireworks. As we take a look at the weather setup across the nation, fairly quiet across Texas, but we do have a system out in San Francisco. Though. This is going to be uh, slowly uh, moving through the nation. It'll move through San Antonio by Monday. Notice, though, that it's not a potentially a very strong cold front. Our uh, Afternoon highs are only going to drop into the low 70s behind that front. Until then, most immediate thing you need to know, some patchy fog tomorrow morning and then morning fog and drizzle on Monday. Monday is going to be pretty humid. I'll talk more in detail about that forecast coming in the next half hour. Great day for a cookout except for the wind. Yeah, you know, right. paper plates are going to be. Uh, well, you know how you keep that paper plate flying away? Big old rock. Fill it up. Or fill it up.
some barbecue, <laughs> That's potato much salad, idea. <laughs> coleslaw, much better idea than a big whatever. Old rock. Yeah, just yeah. pile it on there. It's not going anywhere. Calories don't count on New Year's Eve. No, they do not. 849, 54 degrees. <laughs> Coming up next, we've, have you ever wondered just how much confetti actually ends up on the streets of Times Square after the big celebration? Well, we're going to take a look at that. And there's some stuff written on those little pieces of paper, too. This morning, New York is ready to ring in the new year. The famous Times Square ball is expected to drop in front of a full crowd for the first time since the pandemic started. The 12 foot ball weighs six tons, has more than 2000 crystals and 32,000 LED lights. Organizers of the New Year's Eve celebration did some practice runs yesterday to make sure everything is running smoothly. The ball will be lifted up at 6 p.m. this evening and the countdown begins 60 seconds to midnight. And there's also a test run for the confetti that's going to fall during the New Year's Eve celebration in Times Square. CBS News reports that some 3000 pounds of confetti is going to fill the air. And then, of course, the streets on the first moments of 2023. The confetti drop will be thousands, include thousands of wishes submitted at the New Year's Eve wishing wall in Times Square. And with no, if that's what's written on some of those uh, pieces of confetti. And since there's no COVID requirements this year, the celebration is going to be a lot different than last year. Remember last year, only 15,000 were allowed to attend. And even back in 2020, nobody was there. Remember that? Streets were pretty much blank as they dropped that ball for the first time in front of a crowdless Times Square. So things will be a whole lot better come up tonight when that ball drops in New York City. 853, 54 degrees. And coming up after the break, New Year doesn't mean the party has to stop. We're going to look at events going on in the Alamo City and surrounding areas for the entire month of January. If you are just waking up trying to figure out how am I going to celebrate New Year's this evening? Well, we've got a list of ideas for you on our website, kset.com. Just go there and figure out what you want to do tonight. Also, if you're already starting to plan your January, maybe some fun events for you. You can find those listed on our website as well. KSET.com is where you want to go. And in case you missed it, the KSET Storyteller Special is right now on KSET.com as well. You can watch what stories our talented photojournalists remember most this last year in 2022 as they take you behind the scenes on what goes into covering the stories you see right here on KSET 12. It is now 856. It's 54 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A nonprofit that believes in second chances is helping former inmates find employment while feeding people in need at the same time. Plus, picking out a New Year's resolution can be tricky. What a psychologist is saying about finding the right one and sticking with it.